I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thank you all for coming out on a less than stellar evening. It's not as bad as what it's going to get later on. So we'll try to rush through this so we can get everybody home safely, right? That's our uh, story, and we're sticking to it. We have uh, several guests, and some had asked to address the council, or I solicited their address to council uh, before this evening. And you might remember going back into the December meetings, we had asked Samantha and Ron to come and uh, tell us about the new super duper uh, renovated bowling alley out on uh, just on the outskirts of town so samantha we're, we're very happy to have you thank you uh, when i think when i first asked you back about thanksgiving we were trying to find a date that wouldn't conflict with kids events and stuff like that and then and every uh, night there's a council meeting my son has a basketball game yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> well and, and we don't want to dwell on something that was more of a concern a month ago but you can also give us uh, an update on Ron's hand as he was working at the bowling alley. He was. Yeah. We were in a. He was in a hurry that evening to get out the door to uh, memorial service, and um, he thought he would just reach in the machine really quickly and fix a problem. And the machine grabbed a hold of him and Ooh. pulled him in. So um, we spent five days at Ruby Memorial Hospital, and um, two surgeries later, he got to come home. So. I told him if he needed a vacation, I could have thought of a lot better places to yeah. spend five days than okay. Ruby Memorial Hospital. So um, he's healing well, and he's went for his follow-up appointment with his surgeon, and he's she's very pleased with yeah. the his progress so far. So. Prognosis is good. That's yes. all we could uh, yeah. hope or pray for. So. <laughs> well, tell us about the new operation. Uh, well, you guys acquired the, the the bowling alley. When was it now? We purchased it in August and opened. Our grand opening was November 10th. Okay. So it's been a journey, many long hours there, but we're enjoying it. It's open and the kids are coming and everyone seems to be enjoying it. So they must be the parking lot packed <laughs> all the time. Yeah, I was going to say, adults are coming too. <laughs> we have lots of families that come, birthday parties. It's it's nice. It's, they still have good hot nice. dogs? Yes, yeah. we do. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't been there, you should come. <laughs> I've got hot dogs in the past. I'll sneak out there again. Highlight some of the, the new and improved uh, elements, aspects of the operation. Mm, we've added more um, <clears throat> A game room type um, atmosphere for the kids more of that um, there's more than just bowling to do when you come and, and we have a great menu we have a good lunch crowd and <coughs> we employ eight people so I think that's good for the community as well and absolutely so. and new some new mechanizations with the lanes themselves is that um the lanes themselves are exactly the same now with that being said we have went to several um lanes that have closed down their businesses yeah. one in huntington and got a couple truckloads of parts and we're refurbishing and trying to bring those back up so we don't have as many problems with sure. the the machines but the A2 machines we've been told by Brunswick are the best machines you can have. So we're just trying to bring those back up and make them operate more efficiently. And so we don't have to spend so much time working on them. But yeah. And it's the same telephone number as always. As always, yes. So if you want to reserve the uh, place for a party or something like that, what's it, 472, remind us? 5070. 5070. Yes, sir. Super. Well, we'll have to schedule uh, like a, a city bowling league. Or well, that's what like I was going to say. A lot of people are yeah. in the bowling um, leagues. A lot of my friends are. They, mm -hmm. they bowl. Well, we have else. right now. We have Sunday and Monday night leagues. Still um, a mixed league on Sunday night. We have ten teams on it, and then Monday night is women's league. We have five teams. The men's league was typically on Tuesdays, but they actually, since our renovations, put them. See, typically August, September, October, November, we were three months past what they typically would start bowling. So they, most of them went to Philippi or Elkins and did bowl, do bowling there through the end of the season. But they're all ready to come back. And we're hoping, I was just telling Robbie that 
we um, now know with kids back in school and after the holiday, kind of our not so busy days are Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So we would love to get like corporate tournaments or leagues started out there and just get the word out that we are open during the day and we're open, we're going to be open all summer and try to get, you know, the daycares and things like that interested in coming out and doing some events there, so. And you and, and Ron have children. You want to tell us about the kids? Um, Ronnie has a son by his first marriage, Wesley. He is going to be 30, and he works at the 88, yeah. actually. And then yeah, we graduated together. Yeah. And then um, Ronnie and I have a 14-year-old, Zade. He's yeah. in eighth grade this year and plays for the middle school basketball team. Awesome. So he keeps us busy. Yep. Fantastic. That's great. Well, we had uh, your counterparts, the Ramseys, here at a recent meeting talking about Jester Line getting ready to open. And, you know, every once in a while somebody will be uh, doing the sad song and dance on Facebook about there's nothing for kids to do in this town. Absolutely. And I'm like, oh my God, you got to be kidding. You know, <laughs> you, can, you get out to the new uh, and improved bowling alley or, you know, the Jester Line thing or we've got a great movie theater just outside of town. and. There's all kinds of things for kids to do. You just got to look for them, right? Absolutely. So we'll uh, we'll be sure to uh, everybody out there in TV land. The bowling alley is new and improved, right? Absolutely. We'll uh, we'll be out to check it out soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you for thank being you. here. Thank you. Give Ron our best. Thank we hope you. Appreciate you. Feeling back to him. Good old self here. So. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Our next guest uh, is uh, really a, a, a no, not a stranger to any of us. But I'm going to ask Shirley Tinney to come up. And Shaw, you can come too if you'd like. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on over this way. All right. All right. All right. All right. Not, not everybody. Now, these guys are back up here. Not everybody gets a marriage proclamation, Shirley. You're the last one in town. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. All right. So back in October, we started this uh, new award to honor people who perform exemplary service, and you are our January honoree. So uh, indulge me here for just a moment. Whereas the Council of the City of Buchanan resolved during its regular meeting of October 18, 2018, to honor from time to time residents of our Buchanan Upshur community who perform extraordinary service while embracing the kind and giving spirit of volunteerism. And, whereas Buchanan has long championed community service and has recognized persons who have given selflessly for the benefit of our city's fire department, Stockard Youth and Community Center, and police department, but had not until recently formally recognized others who generally perform many other acts of service and kindness, and, Whereas with the 2018 establishment of our Buchanan Volunteer Center, the City Council deemed it to be very reasonable and appropriate to henceforth recognize our community's most giving volunteers with previous honorees of the Buchanan Exemplary Service Testimonial, see that spells best, being Amanda Hayes, Zachary Mutchler, and Robin Keogh. Now therefore, I, as Mayor of the City of Buchanan, pursuant to the power and authority duly vested in me, to hereby proclaim as our city's fourth recipient of our Buchanan Exemplary Service Testimonial for January of 2019 to be Shirley Tinney. Ms. Tinney has been the single biggest supporter and organizer of our community garden on Baxter Street, spending countless hours for years now to support the Parish House Food Pantry Program with fresh vegetables, thus providing fresh produce to those who need it most, she is a constant supporter of the arts, volunteering her time very liberally to assist all Buchanan Community Theater productions. Shirley is a fi fixture at Festival Fridays, aiding all create Buchanan causes, and she was an organizer of the inaugural Community Unity and Kindness Service Day, conducted in October of 2018. Simply stated, if there is a service cause in our community, Shirley Tinney most certainly will be one of the first people to step up to volunteer time after time. I direct the establishment of our city's new best bench and installation of a permanent placard in Jawbone Park to forever honor and recognize Shirley Tenney and all honorees of our best award. 
I further urge all residents to join our city's most honored guest, Shirley Tenney, her family, friends, admirers, and me, along with all members of our city government family, during our public ceremony to be conducted at 7 p.m. on Thursday, January 17, 2019, as we bestow our city's fourth best award. We all wish Shirley Tenney all the best as she continues her tireless work benefiting so many in our community. May every resident be mindful of the importance of community service and giving of oneself and be inspired to selflessly for the benefit of others as we pay tribute to the many substantial contributions of our exceptional volunteers, including our fourth best honoree, Shirley Tinney, given under my hand and the official seal of the city of Buckingham this 17th day of January, 2019. We uh, can't be concerned. Shaw, Shaw is not in any of these photos. <laughs> you brought Shaw. Do you want to introduce folks who might not be acquainted with Shaw? It's Shaw Bykovsky. He's my other half. The sidekick. No. Shaw sidekick. And he helps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank, you. Right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Boy, surely has had it now. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next is Christy Stewart is here with Literacy Volunteers. Uh, Christy um, came to a, a utility board meeting recently and in the process of addressing a, a request on the part of Literacy Volunteers, we got the scoop on their new digs and uh, some neat stuff that's going on with them and it's been a while since we had you come address us so would you like to come up to the podium and tell us about what's going on with literacy volunteers sure and i do have handouts um you just tell me where to leave them yeah um mary all paul will pass them right now i sure. made these up <laughs> before i came got the book sale scheduled um today as a matter of fact it will be Friday, March 29th, and Saturday, March, March 30th at Holy Rosary. One's got your name on it. Um, <laughs> but I figured bookmarks are easier to keep a hold of, and I wanted to make sure that I had something to hand out. And if anybody wants a sign or a flyer to put in your window or hand out, let me know. I can make sure to get them to you. We'd love to have one for our lobby. Okay, as soon as I, I didn't have a chance to do those up yet, but I will I will bring a stack here. Super. And that way we'll have them, we can get them out. Fantastic. Um, okay. And I did bring along our newsletter with kind of some updates and things that are going on. Um, we've moved into our new place September 1st. It was a little crazy, a little chaotic. Um, we didn't get the keys until the week before, so <laughs> it was a little little nuts. Um, Matt Kerner and the Opportunity House helped us get everything packed up, loaded, and, and moved basically across the street. Um, we're now located, instead of behind Holy Rosary, we're beside Holy Rosary. Mm -hmm. um, in the old uh, TV repair shop, and then it was the DME place, um, right at the base of St. Joe's Hill. Um, right at the yield sign, so we're we're easy to find, and we see all kinds of traffic <laughs> coming in and out. Um, but that's where we are. We're still trying to figure out where things go. Um, but we have some new problems, which is a good problem. Um, just within the last two weeks, I've gotten phone calls. I have six prospective students. Wow. We need tutors. Um, so. If anybody's interested in giving an hour to a week to help someone learn to read or brush up on their math, um, we, could, we could use the tutors. Um, we've been, we've had like the same number of, of students for a while, so this is, this is nice, this, this influx in new students. Um, I'm excited about it, um, and I'm a lot when I'm nervous, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. Um, oh, we do have new challenges um, also with the uh, utilities. We didn't have utilities before in the previous place. We would just pay a, a stipend to the church to go towards utilities. So we, we now have uh, $300 a month that we've never had before. 
and, and utilities, but we're working on that. Um, we just finished up with our um, end of the year ask letter campaign. We got some returns, so somebody may get some late letters uh, sent back out where we redid the addresses. Um, and keep an eye out for flyers about our Mother's Day and Father's Day basket raffle um, that we're getting ready to send out. And I'm also planning to attend the Legislative Day next month um, for additional funding for our program. Sure. Any questions for Christy? I have that bookmark. Oh, I've, I've got just stack of them. Oh. <laughs> Do you get a newsletter? Yeah, I've got a few extra copies of the newsletter I brought, and I brought a stack of, of I've got them in my bag. I'll grab them and, and hand them all, oh. all over. Um, and, and we also have the uh, newsletter is on our Facebook page, on Literacy Volunteers <laughs> Facebook page. And I, once I get the uh, our flyers done, then we'll have that also on the, the Facebook page. Oh, and we're going to start, we're going to get our schedule up and running with for book donations and sortings. Mm -hmm. And we'll have that on our Facebook page. And anybody that's interested in helping sort books, you get three free books per day that you help sort books. And when you're sorting books, you get first dibs. So <laughs> that's, that's a perk of the job. But we'll, we'll have that all announced on our Facebook page once we get the, the schedule ironed out. Christy, well, yeah, what's your age range in regard to those people that um, want to learn how to read? Our, um, the ones that are that currently just asked, uh, our youngest is 24. Our youngest is 24, but the oldest, actually, he's in his 80s. Wow. wow. Yeah. So never too late, huh? Never no. too late. Never too late at all. Um, That's something you can cling to. <laughs> <laughs> we have. We actually have Ooh. two gentlemen in their in their twenties that want to get their CDLs, and they need a little help. They they're high school graduates, but they need a little help with their reading. And one needs a little boost in math also. Um, we have a gentleman that has taken all the courses for the CNA, but he needs help with the testing part for the exam. And then we have one gentleman who needs help with the master plum master plumbers exam, and then one lady needs help with math for her GED or her task. Um, that's the ones off the top of my head. But one gentleman showed up, parked at our door, and gave me a little piece of paper with his name and phone number, and said, "I'm 84 years old, but I don't know how to read. Can you all help me?" And I said, Let, "Give me a chance to find you a tutor, and we can help you read." Chrissy, um, how, how does a person graduate from high school and not be able to read? That, that's a good question. We actually, several of our students have diplomas, but they have what they're considered special diplomas. Mm -hmm and they read at a second to third grade level, most of them. And some of your other colleagues at uh, Literacy Volunteers, I, I know Mrs. Merrill, who else? Um, Courtney is a tutor. Um, we have um, Suzanne Haas. She just came and started tutoring with us. Wow. Um, <coughs> off the top of my head. Ben, ben Crutchfield, he was a tutor for years. He doesn't tutor anymore, but he he still volunteers. Um, we always have an ask Ben pile with book sortings because sometimes yeah. we just don't know where they go. Yeah. <laughs> so we always ask him. Um, we have, um, let's see, Joe Shreve is one of our tutors. <coughs> David Whitmoyer is one of our tutors. Um, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head everybody's name. That's quite a group of folks. And we we and have you, an incredible you contribute group. to it, you can write your checks to, to it. You can just write it to LVUC instead of writing out literacy volunteers of Upshur County. Yeah. And you have a board? Yes, we do. Um, we Creed Pletcher is one of our board members. Jay Bryant, Matt Kerner, not them I remember, uh, <laughs> Joe Rogers, uh, Jessica Vincent, Jennifer Hyam, Emily Stasny, and Lori Harvey. <coughs> Lori Harvey and Leanna Foster. Yeah, that's a great group. 
Yeah, yeah we have an, an incredible board. And then one of your big fundraisers, is it an annual or twice a year book sale? The book sale is twice a year. We have one in the fall and then we have one in the spring. And actually, we work on our book sales year round yeah. um, because we accept donations year round and everything that comes in, we sort it by category mm -hmm. um, or if it's fiction, we sort it by author's last name and box it all up in market and then the Opportunity House help us uh, set up our book sale. If it weren't for them, we couldn't do it. But we completely transform Holy Rosary Social Hall and I've seen the <laughs> and it's it's unrecognizable. Yeah. Um, but we go through when we have categories marked, everything's marked, and certain authors, we have some very prolific authors that we have along the pews and along the walls because we just have so many of each author they would take up too much room on our tables but we we sort we do the sortings and everything all year long because we're always getting book donations we just can't get the donations like we used to we would randomly come in and find a porch full of books because we have the covered porch in the previous location and we don't have a place safe for the books because of the weather, that's why we have to schedule um, the book donations at First Community. Mm -hmm. We that's where we take in the books, and that's where we sort is upstairs. Um, they have their main doors, and then you'll see our um, we have a window mural that my and she's 18 now painted, and then we have some some picture um, lost the word. Uh, I lost it, but we have <laughs> several pictures um, of previous past and present students and activities and things, so you can't miss us, and we'll have signs up when we're there, but we'll have, uh, once we get the schedule, we'll put it on Facebook, and that way, or you can call us and ask us when we're sorting or when we're accepting book donations. So if somebody's looking to downsize their library, we'll take them. contact the nursery volunteer. We'll take them. The only thing we don't take... We don't, the only magazines we take are the Wild and Wonderful West Virginia magazines because we share those with the um, the game farm. Okay. They they're try they're building a, a resource center an education center, so we give them those books to them, um, but we don't take dictionaries unless they're medical dictionaries, and we don't take encyclopedias because you can Google everything now, and they just don't sell. When you uh you said you're going to the legislature. Do they uh, provide some funding for you to stay? They have in the past. Um, we have not gone since I've been with, with literacy, and I started there five years ago this month. Um, but previously, I know that we had received Linda Fiola, the director that that brought me on. She went the year before I came on, and they gave her five thousand dollars for our program. So it's worth a try to go and see if they, they have funding to help us. How about the county or the Board of Ed? Do they provide any funding? No. No. Um, we, all of our funding comes from our fundraisers and grants. But the grants, a lot of our grants are few and far between because most grants are geared toward children education and not toward, toward adult education. Mm -hmm. So that makes, because we're an adult education program, it narrows our window considerably. Uh, I have one quick question. What did you say the date was for the, uh, the upcoming sale? The book sale is March 29th and 30th. Wow. Did you not know that when you did the um, newsletter? No. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> the newsletter went out. Uh, the newsletter went out actually before Christmas, okay. and I just scheduled the book sale this morning at okay. a quarter to eleven. So I'm just reading this thing back in front. I didn't see it. Now you know. <laughs> yeah. Colin Rager will be down there with his, you know, semi truck. Or I'm actually I'm putting in my yeah. calendar. There we go. Well, you know, watch our Facebook, and you can come and help sort and get free books. All right, we'll uh, we'll try to remember to put that on our <coughs> community calendar too. To Wonderful, thank you. So, super. Any other questions or questions before we let her go? Thank you. Keep, keep up the great work. Yes, thank we you. appreciate you. Thank Thanks so much. Our next guest. I think Laura's here. Laura, where are you at? And there she is, back in the back. I, I apologize. Okay. Laura, Ward, Laura Ward with uh, 
It says county roads, but we know it's country roads. It's definitely country yeah. roads. You haven't changed your name. I haven't. Yeah. Actually, do you guys know that story? Do you know who named Country Roads Transit? Donnie Dunbar. Donnie Tenney. <laughs> Donnie Tenney was on um, county commission, and Becky Poe came to start transit, and they said we're still struggling to find a name, and Donnie Tenney booked out Country Roads Transit. And John Dunbar Dunbar. would have been a much better show. But now we know why it's in the spot. <laughs> <laughs> we know who to, to the credit. I appreciate you letting me come today and report. Um, I, I come every year to report because you guys are good enough and and generous enough to invest in transit in Upshur County. Um, it's an investment. It, it truly is. We gave 7,341 rides in Upshur County last year. Um, if you... That, that's rides to the store, that's rides to medical appointments. That's rides to the senior center to get a healthy meal. Um, that's rides for social and recreational to banks all around the city of Buckingham. And it's an investment not in transit itself, but in the citizens who partake of those rides. Most of us, I would imagine, have our own cars. We can go wherever we want, whenever we want to go there. But if you think for a moment about someone who doesn't have that, who can't get to the doctor unless there's a transit service, and then you think of the cost of them not getting to the doctor or not getting where they can purchase healthy meals, the cost of the community is far greater for that person to be sick and try to get them well than it is to give them the supportive service they need to stay healthy in the first place. So it truly is an investment in your citizens. Um, and I see some new faces. Does, does, is there anyone that doesn't know the, the two kinds of service that we provide with Country Road? No. I think you can, you, lay it, you can lay it on us. Wonderful. So when we started 12 years ago, we had one van in Upshur County. And we tried to do, I don't know why we did this, but we tried to do both demand response or dial a ride services and a loop with one van. It didn't really work out. So we did just demand response. So that is you call the day before, you tell us where you need to go, what time you need to get there, we pick you up in plenty of time to get you there, call us when you're done, we take you home. That worked well for, for several years. At the same time that was going on, the senior center in Upshur County had a small transportation service funded by senior Older Americans Act, 3D funds. So they, within three miles of the senior center, were giving rides to seniors only on a donation basis. They were limited both in, within that three miles and their budget got tighter and tighter. So the senior center director and I were having this conversation about he might need to give up the transportation program that the senior center had. It is an enormous loss anytime you lose any kind of transportation service in a rural area. An enormous loss to the people who are partaking of that. So we came up with a plan. We decided we were going to work together. We got the transit powers and the senior center powers that be in Charleston and various places to agree to let us partner. They took the money they had been using, which wasn't enough to sustain their limited service. We were able to get matching federal dollars for that. Wow. So in addition to continuing demand response service, we were able to start a second van in Usher County, uh -huh. which is the loop van that you see run around town. So I'm going to leave a stack of these, but um, this is our loop van schedule. It also tells a little bit about our demand response. So it has every seven times a day we're at all of these destinations. Someone can just flag it anywhere along, even if not one of these stops. Raise your hand and the van will stop and get you in a safe place. Sure. Okay? One of the wonderful things about that partnership is that we were able to keep the integrity of their funding by giving rides on that loop van to seniors for free. But part of our goal was to expand that service because there were people outside of the city, say in Adrian, that needed to get to town, that needed to get to the doctor, that needed a, an appropriate place to shop for to get fresh foods and more variety and less expensive foods. 
So when we did this, we also went out on a limb and said, okay, twice a, we gave a certain number of demand response rights, a certain value of demand response rights to every senior citizen as part of that funding source, that, that money that the senior center chipped in. It is an amazing example of how two nonprofits can work together and provide way more service than we could ever provide as individuals. Um, it took a lot of forethought on the, from that board. You know, Sometimes we're all territorial about what our little bubble of the world is, and we're not willing to do that. That board, from day one, was in. Um, we continue that partnership to this day. We increase every year on that loop van. The wonderful thing for the city of Buckhannon is that it brings those people in from the outskirts. Those seniors especially come from the outskirts of the county. They get that demand response. They get to come in here, say from Adrian, twice a month. That, that value will pay twice a month for free. They ride the loop van for free. They're running all around the cannon. Um, and because we're general public transportation and we're not just for seniors, we were able to provide that transportation also to non-seniors. It's $1.25 every time you get on that bus. When you compare that to the price of gas, the price of owning a car, the price of insurance, that is a very affordable, affordable way. Okay. Now, one of the things we always try to do in Buchanan is get more Wesleyan students to ride. A few years ago, Wesleyan students came up with this. They wanted, they were going to try to get money to start a public transit in Upshur County. I thought I would die of a stroke when I heard that. We're right here, you know. Um, we'd like to expand our hours, and that's one of our goals, but we've got to use limited resources to impact the greatest number of people right now. So that's why our, why our hours are what they are. Um, and I'll remind you that the investment that you're making is actually double because we do get those matching federal funds. So every dollar that you invest in Country Roads Trans is actually $2 you're investing in your citizens. Mm -hmm. Do our friends up the street with the County Commission also assist? Yes, sir, they so, do. And their dollars are matched as well? Yes, so, they are. Yeah, terrific. Yes. Terrific time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful. And we've had support both from your County Commission and from this council since the beginning, and we are truly grateful for that. Yeah, each, each of us did it for 12 years so far. You have, mm -hmm. and 12 more to come. Yeah. <laughs> well, we Hopefully. appreciate everything that uh, Country Roads does for the folks that need it most. Thank you so much. Well, I think it goes to the high rise too, right? It does, it does. You, uh, please take one of these and look at all the places that the loop goes. Anywhere it's not listed here, um, remember that that's, there's that, thank you, that dial ride service. Sure. So if you don't live on that route or want to go to a destination not on that route, yeah. say the bowling alley, you know. <laughs> there you go. You know, start a, a senior league in the middle of the day. There you go. That's a great idea. Just Thank you. Mm -hmm. Samantha supports that. <laughs> I do. That's a great idea. Any questions? For Laura, before we let it go, how does how does seven thousand three hundred forty one compare to years past, or is that high? Is that the most ever, or is that kind of right in line? It's not the most ever, so we see sort of an up and down, a slight up and down, and so this year versus last year is down about seven um, percent from the year before. We see that lots of trans agencies in the state are seeing that. Believe me, we spend a lot of time in our heads trying to figure out what this fluctuation is or why did that go up or why did this go down. Um, one of my best guesses is that, quite frankly, baby boomers, women who are of baby boomer age, are dr driving much more than their counterparts in previous generations. So if you watch a senior center parking lot, it used to be ladies who never worked and never drove, coming to do crafts. And now it's women who always worked and always drove, coming to do Tai Chi and Mahjong. It's it's a very different group of people. And so that's part of the reason that we think there's a down, a slight down turn in the last couple of years. Sometimes it changes because of weather too. It is. Okay. Or economics, you know, that we see it. And I wish I was smart enough to tell you exactly why that changes because boy I'd make a million dollars. <laughs> but that's still an average of 20 persons every single day who avail themselves of this service. It is. Who need it? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
absolutely need it. Have no other way to get there. What absolutely. percentage do you think of your riders are senior citizens? I can tell you that. Um, about half. So out of 7,341 passengers, 3,877 of them guess. are seniors. Yeah. There's also a disabled class. So sometimes if they're disabled, I don't, I can't tell you out of about the 2,000 disabled riders how many of those are seniors and how many aren't. But I can tell you that 1,453 of them are not elderly or disabled. Hmm. And that number continues to grow. That's one of our biggest struggles is to, is to, for people to understand that it's not a senior transportation service. We're lucky enough because of our partnership to have the base out of the senior center, um, but sometimes that makes it that people don't understand that we're not just for seniors. Does the money that we invest here out of Upshur County, both this council and, and the county commission, does it stay on this side of the aisle? Because I know that there's this is in Elkins and Randolph County as well. Yeah. Do they fund their side and we fund our side, or is it all into one giant kitty and it just it's it's country roads transit together it, it is country roads transit together i can break out expenses for you um i don't have that with me but i can definitely send that to you um but i promise you that that the amount of match we're getting here that the expenses exceed the amount of match we're getting from upshire county and barbara county is country roads also no barbara county is here and there transit yeah, and, the, and they're administered also by their senior center. So, and, and so is, is Country Roads. Country Roads is, a, a, I'm the senior center director in Randolph County and the transit director for both. Um, and so that's also very confusing but sure. for me too. Well, as you know, we're getting edging closer to being into our budgeting process for 2019-20. And I can't imagine that this council would uh, not continue its same contribution that we've done in the past. So Thank we'll, you. we'll take we, that up soon. We appreciate that. Yes, we're, we're counting on you. Any other questions before we let Laura go? We got that drive back to Elkins, right? I do. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. you have a chauffeur for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I would like to say that I've now broken the bad, I, I can get rid of my reputation for bringing bad weather with me. It might be a little slick, but it is not a snowstorm. Sure. Every other time I'm here, there's a foot of snow. That's a blizzard. <laughs> there's one coming. You better, yeah. <laughs> you better hurry. It's on the road. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for much. coming. Thank you. Again. Thank you. Appreciate Safe travels home. Thank you. Our last guest of the night, he shouldn't be classified as a guest anymore either, is Mike Kozad. He's been a while since we've seen you all, buddy. Where you been yeah, probably too long. Yeah. Um, Thanks for uh, letting me speak tonight. I'll try to keep it brief. Absolutely. Uh, we've had some uh, key events occur, and I thought it would be appropriate to address council and uh, keep you guys apprised of, of what's going on uh, with the project and, and the impact that it, uh, it's going to have on Buckhannon in the year 2018, especially. Um, briefly, uh, since uh, time is short here, uh, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals in Richmond uh, last month dealt us a blow. They uh, found the three permits from other federal agencies, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, for the Forest Service, and the U.S. Park Service to be invalid and therefore basically shut down the project. Um, we've been down since uh, about the middle of December. Uh, and unlike the previous time where we were um, in the same situation where the permits were invalidated for a period of time uh, the entire 600 miles this time has been shut down as opposed to the 100 miles that were shut down in the affected areas by those permits so um, we're our hands are tied right now much more so than they were the last go around um, we don't know when we're going to get uh, before the courts again we know it's gonna be sometime in March at the earliest now uh, we've got bad, uh, bad issues where we have to cut trees down before March 31st or we can't cut them again until next fall. Um, so if we don't get before the court and get a quick decision, uh, and even if we were to, the, the time frame that would be left would be uh, short. So you can see that um, we're between a rock and a hard place kind of. and. Uh, we're, we're really doubtful that we can get much work done this year. 
Um, Michael's locally here had uh, nearly 700 people at peak uh, back in uh, November or so. Um, they're down to, well, they were down to about 70 here as of last week. They're going to pick up a little bit. We've uh, got the okay to put pipe in the ground that was welded and sitting up on top of the ground. We, we've been permitted to uh, go ahead and put that in the ground and close it up and, and, and seal it up for however long it takes to get back to work. So um, you can see by that that it's, uh, it's going to impact a lot of things in Upshur County in the year 2019. Uh, the restaurants, the hotels, the you know, the Lowe's, I talked to the manager out there, just on and on, everywhere I go, uh, I think, uh, you know, there's gonna be a significant impact by uh, the volume of our folks not being here uh, in, the, in the year 2019. So um, that's uh, something that uh, will probably feed into your budget process. Uh, I, don't, I didn't get with Andy to get the numbers from the hotel receipts and the taxes on that, but uh, over the last six months, I. I suspect it was a huge, yeah. huge increase over what it was. That's that's probably going to be gone pretty shortly here. So um, I wish I could give you more information than that, but you know, when when we're dealing with federal courts, it's uh, you know, no one's really sure where we're going right now. We we are going to build this thing. I want to make that clear. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. The general attitude within the ACP. No, they're, they're, of, are we going to keep pushing? We're, 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 they're going to push this thing. Yeah, it, it absolutely has to happen. There's too many. Uh, there's too many things relying on this pipeline downstream mm -hmm. that it ha it has to be built. It's going to be built. So it's just and going to be a struggle getting there. There's been hundreds of millions of dollars invested, right? Oh, billions. <laughs> <laughs> or I don't know what the number is exactly, but uh, when I first started here four and a half years ago, I think we. Opened this project up at four and a half billion. It's wow. now seven billion. Uh, the estimate is we're going to be losing about 20 million uh, a week during this uh, downtime. So you're looking at another billion. So um, wow. it, the, the numbers piling up. So, so Mike, I asked you earlier today, you know, that some folks in opposition of this pipeline view this as a, a victory, and sure. that, and we discussed the fact that. When public utilities invest in infrastructure, they're guaranteed a rate of return on that investment. So when you increase from four billion to seven to whatever number it ends up being, you're guaranteed a return on that investment. And so all it's going to do, the delays, is going to increase you getting back the money from the consumer in some shape or form at the end of this thing when it is completed. So Yeah, correct. And then when this thing was first started out, one of the things that was touted about it would be cheaper electric generation downstream in Virginia, North Carolina. Well, most of those benefits that were going to be derived from the cheaper gas are going to dis disappear as a result of this project continuing to climb. So unfortunately, those poor folks who need the help the most with their utility bills, instead of seeing a potential decrease, may ultimately see an increase, unfortunately. Yeah, so that, that's, that's the un, unintended consequences of these. Uh, and just for what it's worth, the, the, these groups that are opposing us, they're not local, they're not, you know, they're not from this region, it's, they're from all over the United States and, you know, they just want to shut down fossil fuels, basically. And um, I just uh, don't think we're ready to get there right now. So. <laughs> Other questions for Mike? I just, had, I just had a question about sure. um, the bat situation. You have to get them cut down by what time? Or well, it's 31st. There, there's, okay. the, there's an endangered uh, species of bat, the Indiana bat, and uh, it's, it's part of its habitat is in the areas that we're, we're working, so uh, we're restricted in the time we can cut trees down in those areas. And you can't do it again until when is that? Uh, here it's uh, at least September. Okay, I was just the, curious yeah. about that. Okay, thank you. Sure. You said the uh, previous um, phase that was stopped was 100 miles, now 600 miles. There's one area that is more vulnerable than other areas, or yeah, there's there's several endangered species along the route that this applies to, and if you consolidate all those areas, it was about a, and the national forest is included in that. That it totaled up about 100 miles of impacted areas that 
you know, we're either species oriented or national forest. So that's what we were limited in last time. So we could still do a lot of work else, you know, a lot of work in other locations. Now we're we're totally shut down. So how, how the um, how they invalidated versus the last time? Well, they just claim that the 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 various agencies, federal agencies, did not do their appropriate due diligence, basically, in, in granting those permits that they gave them to us pretty early. That's the best way I can describe it to you. So you'll, uh, we'll be appealed again and then oh, yes. the whole process. Yes. Yeah. And we're hoping for relief in, in our March hearings. Uh, but again, that's, you know, right now it's up in the air. Other questions from Mike? Well, sorry. Hang in there. Yeah. Well, we're, we're here to stay. You're still so. going to be staying with us, though. I guess. Uh, that's my help, yeah. yeah. We hope so, too. Yeah, well, I need to keep you guys informed of what's going on, so. We enjoy your company. I, I, I plan on being here. Thank Thanks. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mike. Department and board reports. First up is our uh, grant writer, researcher, information coordinator, Kelly Cronin Sanders. Kelly, how's it going? Good evening. Um, I guess I'll just start by saying uh, since. Ms. Moore was here this evening that the brochure that you have in front of you is also on our website in digital form if you go in about the city and go down to public transit it has a page with information about country transit and then you can print out that as a PDF as well online so that is on our website um, also on our website I've been working with uh, Dr. Kim Bjorger Thorne's class to do a GIS map as a GIS class and um, It'll feature fishing species and hot spots along the Buchanan River in town, uh, notable trees, and there's Pringle tree, even though it's not in uh, the corporate limits. We'll feature that as one as a tree since it has the historical significance, but also other trees that are notable in town, either by size or species. Uh, it'll mark each of our parks, uh, some good bird watching sites, and as well as the community garden, orchard, and the pollinator lots. So. Uh, I'm excited for that to be complete. We'll embed it on the website and we'll also print it out in poster form to have around in the community. <coughs> so I think that'll be a good project. Um, the website, I did go ahead and put in our Google Analytics dashboard and the Facebook is right next to it. You see that huge spike, that was uh, the police, the recent police warning about those chemical storage tanks that had been stolen and they were uh, concerned about possible reuse uh, to store water and did not want folks to be doing that. So that's the spike you see there both on uh, the website as well as Facebook. The 4,000 views on Facebook was that same post that linked to our website. Um, also got quite a few views on the Spelling Bee uh, press release that we shared on Facebook. And also for Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Uh, we shared that on Facebook and that got some views. Um, then I know I have up on the screen tonight. This is what's on our LED screen out near Sheets, as well as a reminder about the levy election coming up. And this has been playing throughout the time since the early voting started as well a couple weeks ago. So that's been up. And, uh, a reminder about the 2025 planning survey to go ahead and take those and uh, just change this out today prior to today it also has the information about the town hall meeting that we had on Monday um, been focusing a little bit on grants so at the beginning of the year so trying to look at um, what op op what opportunities are out there and what we can work on for this year we're working a lot with Amby and Jerry on that of course uh, we were uh, just found out from Jerry today that we had done a small little grant application to cover the cost of training for uh, Jerry to attend in Philadelphia for some Park Street stormwater green infrastructure training and certification. So we did receive that. Uh, we submitted our city snapshot to Places for Bikes uh, to be included in their ranking system for our community's walkable and bi bikeable community. Uh, we partnered recently, just a Tuesday, Opportunity House was actually the lead agency, uh, but went in supporting them in an application to HRSA in a planning for substance use disorder and opioid response planning grant. So strictly planning, no action included, but just a planning type style grant. Uh, that was submitted on Tuesday. Uh, we were awarded that small families leading change uh, grant that I went down I guess that was to Fayetteville back in November and so 
that came through sort of, but they wanted to get us to commit to doing, we had put in two applications and they wanted us to commit to doing both, but for only half of the money. So I'm just going back to them with an MOU that's included in your packet that would just say, look, we'll do one of those with what we had requested. But um, the other, uh, the one that we'd like to proceed with is the nature and gardening supplies for the after school club at Stockert. And that one's pretty much good to go. The other with a natural play area over at City Park turned into what could be a really neat project, could be a little more than what we'd originally looked at um, to do some wetland education and remediation at that same time at that swampy area at City Park. So it's kind of turning into what might be a bigger project anyway. So I'm going to look for some funding for that at a larger scale. Um, let's see. the. Volunteer Center renewal, they did not give us a whole lot of notice on that, so we are going to have to be submitting that by the 5th, and we did not find out about that until earlier this week and too late to get it on today's agenda. So uh, since it's a renewal situation, we'll just, Casey and I will present to you via email what we would intend to submit and maybe something that you could uh, approve after the fact on next agenda, sure. if you see fit. Um, but we. Otherwise, perhaps a special meeting if you'd rather vote on it in advance. But I um, apologize they didn't give us. We didn't have it until after this agenda had to be set. So and what's the amount of the, the funding case? Uh, last year it was $23,000 for that. $23,000, a little over that. But we would ask for the same thing, probably? Mm -hmm. And we just had a in-kind match to that. You didn't put any... <coughs> We can't, uh, we can't take a vote on it since it's not on the agenda, but does anybody want to comment to the negative about proceeding in that direction with reapplication? I do. I think, I know we can't vote on it, but I would like for her to go ahead and process it. It's been a super addition to our... I mean, she's community. she's the grant writer. She knows what she's doing. Mm -hmm. And we it's not something new. It's been a continued thing. Yeah. It's and it's for the kids. And I think they've been talking, we were just talking with Chief Gregor, Gregory today about having an expanded presence with VIPS and really helping out the VIPS program mm -hmm. with the Volunteer mm -hmm. Center and with Casey as well. So that's the direction we'd like to go with it this year. Gotcha. And you have, it has to be postmarked the 5th or they have to receive it by the 5th? I think they want it by the 5th, but I think it's electronic, so. Okay. Much, much appreciate We'll, we'll, uh, we'll make it work. Yeah, we'll, we'll do the formal approval after the time. Okay. What else you got? And then in researching an upcoming, um, Pam reminded me of New York Life opportunity, so I just, um, I'm going to be taking a look at that. That might be one of those. It's for after school funding, so it might be good for Stockard, but I looked in first review that it could be something that's limited to 5013C, so I'll look at that in a little more depth um, tomorrow or early next week. Um, also, I sent Denise Weiss uh, information about the Accelerating Promising Practices for Small Libraries opportunity. I think that's February 25th deadline, so I'll check back in with her to see if she would be interested on that. have also been very interested in the 21st Century Community Learning Center's uh, program with the West Virginia Department of Education, so that might be a good one for Stalker, uh, for programming, not for, it's not brick and mortar, but for programming to help them fund what they're already doing and even maybe expand upon their after-school programming with that one. Um, and then, of course, the First Energy Foundation received that this week from you all, and we'll be looking into that and uh, reapplying for that uh, for the Colonial Theater. Mr. Hefner has assured that he will press hard in the weeks to come after we've made our reapplication for Colonial Theater help. Right. It would be nice to hopefully get an award before the end of this fiscal year mm -hmm. so we could credit that toward the $62,000 grant we got last year from the state. And I do have Bryson provided me with what you know he had worked on in the past and also KB Sane has reached out to say she'd be happy to help in writing that so that sure. would be really helpful. Okay. Also planning to reapply this year uh, for the AML once that becomes available again and the DOH uh, transportation alternatives for the other extension to the Riverwalk um, from where it ends now to Moore Avenue. And so that's it on grants and upcoming events. Of course, uh, the levy election this Saturday. Um, um, 
MLK Junior Day is on Monday. Um, our volunteer center is promoting that as the hashtag of instead of a day off, have it a day on, a day to serve. Um, so on our volunteer center, part of the website, there is some suggestions for different things that you could do around town that day, including the parish house and the senior center and some other opportunities. So you can go on and check that out. Uh, also be at Chamber on the 21st at our Public Safety Complex, and um, Chiefs Kimball and Gregory will be presenting there on Monday. On the 22nd, when school's back in session, uh, the Volunteer Center and one of the fraternities have partnered to do some programming for Stalkers After School Clubs, and so they'll be doing that on the 22nd. And the 26th is the Spelling Bee, so we have four teams, I think, uh, from City, so that should 25th. be fun. Oh, Friday, Friday the 25th. I think and I have that right in the press release, but I did not in when I was And it looks like we're going to have over 40 teams. Awesome. Um, so, and, and Mayor McCauley's going to be on a team. And mm -hmm. so I'll be on a team. You'll be the same team. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Pam is for you. And Pam is on it. And Pam Bill Loftus, I think, right? Is that my correct? I don't think he's doing it this year. I think he's not able to, but Casey is going to be on one, or is she on Stalker? But we've got one lady in the Yeah, Allie, that's still right. need help We could use we could use judges. some judges. Yeah. Anybody like to be a judge, call Sandra Preeser at 472-6012. Is that a, that's a Friday, huh? That's Friday. Yeah, Friday the twenty fifth. And you can come and just watch too, even yep. if you're not there's on no, the team. There's no charge. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be beer and wine served, the cash beer and wine and cheese and stuff. And okay. I can volunteer. I'll be heading up the I'll be heading up the fifty fifty. So don't try to sneak around. <laughs> Did you say call David? That was a ten I gave him. Gary wants to know if the wine's free for judges. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have committed to several classes of wine myself. Okay, good. What's the name San, of the Sandy Priester. Sandy Sandy Priester. Oh, Sandy Priester. Sandy Priester. You got a number? Four seven two six zero one two. Or call me. Or call me and tell me. I don't care. Okay. It, it should be a fun evening. Call Dave anytime. <laughs> the last one on the list. Four seven two. Instead of a Saturday. Three zero two eight. Seven zero seven. No, no, call three zero two eight. You're rascal. Uh, and the February 12th, you want to tell us about the Volunteer uh, the Center? Volunteer Center Speed Volunteering. So in the, the style of speed dating, there will be speed volunteering. Well, you're, you can come in and get to meet different organizations in town who are in need of volunteers or who already have volunteers, learn about what they're doing and how you can get involved. And it'll just be, you'll pick three, I think, and maybe three or four, and then there will be a timer and they have two minutes to try to sell you on what they do and get you involved. So it should be where, a lot where? of fun. February 12th. Where? Public safety. Okay. You forgot. To Elimination done. Remind everybody about French Creek Credit. Oh, I did. You are correct. And we will be at the Wildlife Center again. And I'm really hoping it will be warmer than 11 degrees like it was last year mm -hmm. on February 2nd or Groundhog Day. Yes, it was <laughs> what day is that on? Last year it was. It's a Saturday this year. And so yeah. it coincides with the Groundhog Festival will be going on all day long at the Rock Cave Fire Hall there. It was overcast, it was ugly, there was no way that stupid varmint was going to see you shadow. <laughs> yeah. And at 30 seconds before 10 o'clock, the skies part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was just uh, 11. And Shirley's left, but um, they like the, the story that we did on March 20th last year at Drawbone so much that they're going to be having a reading of that in their arts and education room, not outside, but inside. <laughs> and there's going to be some kids' crafts and stuff going on at the Wildlife Center, too. So, we have, fun. Fun. Uh, we have a uh, Creep Buck Hands Elimination Dinner coming up. That's right. February, February 15th, I think it is. That's, That's right. right. Okay. Yeah. Day after Valentine's Day. Oh, and there's also, Deborah just told me tonight, too, that that's the same date, I think, that they're going to have a sweetheart stance at the Moose. All proceeds, $5 entrance, and all proceeds will benefit Stopper. Yeah, the new. Deborah Brown, yes, Deborah Brown Band Plan.
A, sweet, oh, yeah. a sweetheart dance. Delora. A sweetheart dance was what I was told. That, yeah. Stance or dance? Dance. Dance. Say night. Say night. That's what she told me today. Where are The loose. Oh, the loose. <laughs> okay. What is that? Any questions for Cal? Thank what you. Is that? <laughs> Next up, Jerry. Uh, Friday after yes. Valentine's Day. Oh. I think it, that's why it's sweetheart dance. Okay, good. Thank you. Come take your stance. Here, <laughs> <laughs> cost you ten bucks, sweetheart. I have a pink shirt on tonight. You want to go? You want to go, Robert? <laughs> sure, Dave. Uh, he's gonna do, he's gonna do that speed. <laughs> Welcome to the evening. And you get to follow this. <laughs> Uh, Jay and I are working on the bid package documents and drawing site assessment for the Stockard Youth Center Community Center multi use facility. Uh, the water department, the crew has been working on valves in the sludge room and performing general maintenance tasks. Sewer department crew one continues to work on the Brushy Fork sewer extension at Westview Acres. Uh, crew two is answering sewer complaint calls and assisting the maintenance crew and the maintenance crew's painting cabinets and doors in the plant. Plant crew is still doing uh, routine maintenance of it. Waste department, the new road tractor was put into service the first of the month and it's mm -hmm. doing good. The shop crew had to make a uh, significant repair to one of our open top trailers and waste. The street department crew poured the final section of sidewalk and trailers alley today. And, uh, there's still a little more uh, while well, we have some curbing and stuff on the uh, on the parking lot area. Sidewalk is completed now. Traders Alley. Yeah. They are replacing sidewalks on Mead Street. That's part of the sidewalk assistance program that we've had commitments from our residents to do. Also, the lights on Main Street's been repaired. We've, we've been reimbursed for labor and materials by the contractor caused the damage. They even dug through one of our conduits, and they have paid the invoice that we submitted. Engineering, ACP water line or water system improvements project contract one for the related work of zoom near sheets and will continue towards Pete's Hut, both conventional horizontal drilling. Uh, anticipated completion date is end of January. Clean act activities continues on Brushy Fork from contract two. Gateway West Engineering and Surveying anticipate beginning of construction activities uh, in early spring of 19. And the uh, West Virginia DOH Brushy Fork Water Line Replacement Project contract related work is expected to begin early spring 19 with the water line relocation phase of the project being completed first. And that's all I have in there unless there's questions. That's a lot. Questions for Jerry? I think the uh, Vows in the Sludge Room would be a great name for a punk rock band. Yeah. <laughs> Vows in the Sludge Room. You can use that. Or more of a stancer. Ah. Thanks, Jerry. Hey, there's the name for <coughs> my Bob Cannon's spelling bee team. What's that? Bows in the sludge. Bows. <laughs> no fake news. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's That's <laughs> you don't stop believing. <laughs> uh, yeah. We got some good names out there. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. Amby Jenkins, our director of finance and administration. And Beryl. <laughs> Okay, your balance is in your enterprise funds for uh, December 31st, 2018. Sanitary board and their checking have 374,000. Your CDs was 177,000. So their reserve is beginning to build up. We just put a $100,000 CD in there. So it's, it's, we're doing what we're supposed to do for that time to get in a good financial condition for any, any emergencies. Uh, Consolidated Public Works Board. Checking was $110,000. Water board checking $970,000. And their CDs is $956,000. Waste collection board had $546,000 in checking and $57,000 in their CDs. We sent out information to the supervisors to work on the 2019-20 budget to bring back in their proposals. They're supposed to send that information back into me by January 25th. Um, now Barb and I are going to attend a state auditor's bud budget workshop on February the 4th and I'd encourage anyone on council that wants to attend those meetings in your packets the dates of those and they like for council members to come if they if they want to.
but on the 4th at 5.30, we're going to uh, go over there to Clarksburg is the meeting on February 4th, and anybody that wants to ride with us can do that. Reminder that we'll, we'll have to start now. It's a Monday. Okay. Working, you know, it's just a one day. One, one thing, once I get back from that, we want to start our first uh, budget work sessions, and I'm not quite sure how council wants to handle this year. I think mm -hmm. last year we had a finance committee that sort of looked at it and got it all prepared and ready to submit to council because council has to have meetings together to talk about it. But I don't know if you want to do preliminary meetings uh, and me bring all of the supervisors in to present it. <coughs> if you want us to get it together and then bring them in to submit it. I'm, I'm not quite sure how you want to do that. But Remind us the uh, composition of our finance committee last year. Um, Dave Thomas, myself, I think CJ was on it and Barb. I think that was the composition. Do you have a preference? Amber yourself as to what to do? No, I, it doesn't matter to me. It, it's uh, up to you. It, it, it's more time consuming trying to get council together for those first sessions, honestly, to try to get everyone's schedules together because you do have to meet in March uh, with the budget sessions. And right. the budget has to be in by by the 29th of March. And we got a little more time as a utility budget. Yeah. Oh yeah, those those just have to be finished by the by June thirtieth. So general fund. Only. General fund is the one that has to have. The I like the way we did it the first the first year. I was on council where it was very in depth and we had a lot of meetings and I mean I know it's time consuming but in order to really get a good grasp of what is in there, I I liked that better. Okay. But it's well, just I me. Mean, if you if you would want to set it up, I could I could have a day, and then that way we could get all the supervisors in here at one time. Police, fire, stalker. Yeah, and then we could continue to have sessions, but at least you'd be getting your presentations maybe all in one day. It Rather makes for a longer time. But okay, so we can try to do that. Okay. What's, what, what, what do you think, Council? I'd say knock it out in one day. Want to like, do a 12 to 5 or a 1 to 5 kind of thing, and each supervisor mm -hmm. gets their half hour, 40 yeah. minutes? And we'll... a, couple, a number of years ago, we also did it on a Saturday from like 8 to 12. I don't want to do that. Either. Well, there's a holiday on the 19th of February, I believe, and we could do it that day, too. That's as well. President's Day, so yeah. I just think that that's, that way the supervisors are all here. If you have questions, I mean, it, it's, it's easier, I think, just to then we knock it out, then it's, then it's done. But at the same time, we have a good understanding of what's, of what's being put in these, in these proposals. Mm -hmm. that's, that's I think we need to listen to okay. them, like you said. Well, then we'll start scheduling things, and then you guys will start emailing back and try to coordinate the schedule. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, I sent emails out to let you know, all know, know that we had uh, hired a parking enforcement clerical staff. Her name is Amy Garman. Now she's had some background and actually a little bit of management in retail and she's got a great personality so she'll do really well at this job. We were going to try to get her out this week, uh, train with Chief Gregory and our former uh, parking enforcement officer but we had kind of an internal family emergency in the office so it kind of threw things off a little bit. So we want to try to get her out on parking next week. Um, and I might add a note there that we're going to, one of the first things she's going to do, as soon as I get the residential parking permits in for the area around the college, we're going to start distributing those permits and some services <coughs> about that parking process because we just don't want to go out and start writing tickets. We want people to know what's going on there. The, I, I also emailed you a draft budget revision. I didn't get it on the... Uh, agenda for approval, but it will give you a little more time to look at it. The entire budget revision is going to be about 132000 The bulk of, and this is our major budget revision from from the past six months of work. We, we did a couple little ones, but this is the one where we're kind of going in there and cleaning up and seeing what else we needed to address. And uh, health insurance, where we had a rate increase um, in July, it is now need, we needed to budget for that. So your B&O contractors, we're getting some money in from there. That's We're getting 53000 to add to the budget line item there. And your health insurance amounted to about 60000 in that revision. But anybody has any questions about it? So sure. the health insurance, 61000 of the 132? Yes, yes, yes. 
Yeah, because it we didn't put that in the budget last year when we did the budget. We waited for that to happen for its increase. Then we'll start talking about that in budget sessions. Some of the projections that we think might be for health insurance increases. Well, I think Mike's <clears throat> report on what's happening with the ACP is going to have a significant impact. Yeah, which is, I'm glad I was going to put a hotel motel increase in there, and I was like, mm, probably better not. That may not change much, and I guess probably that's right. <laughs> <They're probably laughs> leave it alone. Try a decrease, actually. Uh, well, I think we're okay with that right now. We well, always for, try to under a little bit. I meant for next year at all. Oh, yes, probably. Um, in bills to be uh, noted for what you have in your packet, three thousand dollars went to our city architect in this in this uh, round of paying bills, and then we paid sixty four hundred to Valley Steel for steel for the wall at Traders Alley, and nine thousand for some blacktop at Traders Alley was expensed during that time. Question. Sure. Yes, and we don't have a full-blown financial statement to approve. You're just bringing this up to speed before we. That's just yeah, the budget revision, and, yeah. and it'll be on the on the agenda next time for approval. We'll have the, the month end in the February, first February. I yeah, I, I always do that the first yeah. part of the month for for general funding, and then I do enterprise the funds the second part of the month. Question, Tram. Is the meeting in Clarksburg on the fourth the only one that's going to be held? No, in your packets. They are in different areas. Martinsburg, January the 30th. Clarksburg, February 4th. Wheeling, February 6th. South Charleston, February 12th. Beckley, February 20th. And then back to Bridgeport on February the 26th. Okay. And those are very informative meetings. I mean, even if you just sit there and kind of watch the, the presentation and the process, you, you learn a little bit about budgeting. Okay. I'd like to go. I, I'm in Charleston the 4th and 5th, so I'll try to shake up another one. Okay, Andy. <coughs> Is this the one that you and Barb and I went to? Yes, I think we did. Yes. Yeah, yes. And, it, mm -hmm. and it was very the educational. The meetings that I like to go to, it's this budgeting workshop, yep. and then there's the state auditors conference that they usually bring to Bridgeport. So they're, they're all great. Those are two really good meetings, governmental officials. And that's another good one to go to. Andy, I think the air conditioner just kicked in. <laughs> yeah, it's free. Thank goodness. <laughs> it's hot in there. A lot of hot air. <laughs> thanks, I, Andy. I think it's <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks. Andy. Next up is our police chief, Matt Gregory. How's it going, Chief? Good. And uh, I invited Tanner Collins to tag along tonight of a special presentation to uh, to begin with. Uh, but before I do that, I'd just like to give uh, just a little context uh, as to what my intentions are here. Uh, the Buchanan Police Department has a well-established uh, award system uh, to recognize the exemplary actions of our officers. Uh, the award system, uh, the formalized award system, uh, and just to kind of give you a background of the hierarchy, starts with the Medal of Valor. And the Medal of Valor is for uh, exemplary bravery uh, in uh, dangerous circumstances. The next step down from that is the Excellent Police Duty Award. And this specific award is for perseverance over a period of time and focus and dedication on uh, investigations or special projects. Uh, the next award is the Meritorious Police Duty Award, uh, which uh, focuses on special attention uh, to duty and uh, faithfulness uh, in the uh, performance of the duties, uh, whether it be investigations or in service. Uh, the next uh, couple awards uh, are the Police Conduct Award, uh, which is awarded to officers uh, who uh, have uh, no complaints on their record over a five-year period. And they're, they're awarded uh, in five-year increments. And then finally, the uh, uh, the next award is the Safe Driving Award, uh, which officers uh, are issued uh, every three years uh, for having uh, no reportable accidents uh, on their record. These awards uh, follow a color format. They all have different uh, variations of blues, whites, and reds uh, in, in various patterns and uh, are issued 
uh, to the officer through a letter uh, of, of award as well as the, uh, uh, the medal itself, which is worn on the Class A uniform. Uh, the only other award, and, and this is one that we don't strive to, uh, to award, but we do have in place, and we have awarded uh, on a couple of different occasions in the past, is the Purple Heart Award. And for those of you familiar with the military, it's for uh, sustaining injury in the line of duty. And again, we have awarded that, uh, unfortunately, in the past couple of years. So this is, again, a well-established award system that we have in place to recognize uh, our officers for uh, the exemplary duty uh, that they perform. Uh, in that regard, I, I have invited uh, uh, Tanner to tag along tonight uh, for this uh, presentation. Uh, Tanner has uh, been with us uh, for going on two years uh, in a part-time capacity. does a very good job uh, in his duties. Uh, it was uh, just last week, a particular occasion that occurred at St. Joseph's Hospital that um, when it came to my attention, I thought rose to the level of this distinction of our award system and merited public recognition. So, Mayor, if I could, I'd like to call him up and reach to the record the award citation. I have uh, placed the award citation in your packets, and if I could, I'll, I'll read this into the record. It says to Patrolman Tanner Collins from Chief Matt Gregory on today's date reference a meritorious police duty award. On January 9, 2019, Patrolman Tanner Collins responded to the emergency room at St. Joseph's Hospital in reference to a juvenile who was suicidal. Patrolman Collins spent well over an hour speaking with the juvenile and at one point even had his blood drawn with the juvenile so that they would feel comfortable enough to talk to him. Through demonstrating special faithfulness, attention to duty, and perseverance over an extended time, Patrolman Collins was able to talk the juvenile from a state of wanting to kill themselves and not trusting anyone to smiling and talking about their future. The juvenile was then able to get the help that they very much needed. The type of compassion and concern demonstrated by Patrolman Collins during this incident is precisely the distinction of what meritorious conduct truly means. It is this type of conduct to which we all should aspire, and therefore I unequivocally commend Patrolman Collins for his actions and award him with the Buchanan Police Department Meritorious Police Duty Award. Yeah. Yeah. Not the clock. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, we're settling for the wrong few. Wrong few. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <I'll see> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. a couple of other notes uh, of uh, what we're working on. Uh, the Police Department does plan on uh, conducting a, a Citizens Police Academy uh, beginning in March. Uh, this will be a nine-week program. We have historically been using this format uh, to train uh, new VIPS volunteers. Uh, we do have uh, four new volunteers that uh, we brought into the program that are going to go through this uh, uh, particular training. We do open this up, even though it is VIPS training, we do open it up to the community. Uh, I know that we are coordinating with Head Start. Uh, the police department has long been partners in education with the uh, Head Start. And we are coordinating with them to receive CERT training. And there's also going to be some overlap with Citizens Academy. So we do uh, hope to see some, uh, some good turnout with this, uh, starting with Head Start. But we've also talked to some other uh, folks in the community that have an interest in, and uh, it, it's great information first and foremost if, if you just uh, if you're not wanting to, 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 to further be involved in, in VIPs you don't have to you can still take this for your information we do speak specifically uh, well generally uh, about law enforcement and specifically about the Buchanan Police Department uh, and uh, our functions uh, and give uh, participants a first-hand look at all of these operations. So it's very beneficial, uh, if nothing else, 
than for uh, uh, the information. Uh, but it is also a bridge or a stepping stone into the VIPS organization as well if individuals so desire to, to continue that. Uh, beyond that, uh, the police department has 22 applicants for the uh, vacant police officer position. I'm pretty pleased with that. Anything over 20 I'm generally pleased with. Uh, we will begin physical agility testing on February 2nd. For those that pass the physical agility test, the written test will be on February 23rd. So we hope to have uh, a list of eligibles uh, to uh, forward to council uh, by the end of February. And then finally, in our continued partnership with uh, the Upshur County Head Start, as I mentioned, uh, we will be providing um, drug awareness training for parents uh, at their um, uh, the Cannon office uh, next week on January 23rd. We provided this training for their staff on a number of occasions and uh, it's been very well received and they want us to offer that to the parents as well. So we're going to do so. Uh, other than that, uh, I do have the uh, monthly report for December in here. We are working on the annual report and we do anticipate uh, having that available uh, for presentation to council next month. It will include or uh, have some differences in it from uh, uh, years past uh, to include some of the new COLIA items that I've been talking about over the last several months. So look for that coming uh, next month. And that's all I have, Mayor, unless there's questions. Questions for Chief Gary? Hey, Matt, I noticed we had 12 shopliftings in uh, the month and five of them were on Monday. I wondered if uh, that okay. was a a uh, rough day in the shoplift there. So. Must have been, yeah. <laughs> I had, uh, I, among those lines, so people are, are, are creatures of habit, and, and I guess that's a fortunate thing for us. Uh, uh, I had an individual come from uh, another county. Every, uh, it, it was it was a certain day, I want to say Monday or Tuesday, but they came to, every day, uh, once a week, at 8.30 in the evening, and stole $300 worth of things. So, so $300 worth of items every Monday for five weeks. Same store? <laughs> Same store. Very consistent. That helped with wrapping things up nicely for the investigation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt. I'm going to, uh, I volunteered to help Steve Wyckoff. Is it Wyckoff? Yes. Okay. With the cert training he's going to be doing. Great. Okay. Because yes. I went through it. He actually, he was my instructor years back. Yeah. I can't participate as a cert team sure. member, but I can help him uh, the best I can as a volunteer to, to conduct the training. Great, that, that's perfect. Uh, and like I said, but especially with Head Start, there's been a lot of interest, so we do anticipate yeah. uh, really filling that class. Yeah. And Steve's in the spelling bee, too. He is, yeah. He's part of our, uh, part of our team. We're fighting for the championship. <laughs> Dang it. <Yeah. laughs> What's the name of your team? Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> Justice League. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Which, which one's Wonder Woman? <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Before Tom gets rolling, I got to pull up something that I got last uh, evening, or was it the evening before? <clears throat> Your attorney, Tom, did such a great job today at the Home Rule Board meeting. Lucky to have him. And I responded, thanks, Lisa. He's a keeper. So, uh, yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, that Lisa, was, uh, Lisa uh, Lisa's, Lisa's a gem. Yeah, I, she is. I really yeah, she is. Yeah. Um, I appreciate, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that very much. I, um, so that, um, just as a matter of report, and to keep and to keep my report brief, I'll report on the action of the Municipal Home Rule Board um, yesterday. Uh, much of the past month has been spent in preparation for the um, preparing and presenting the uh, application uh, that the council approved back in November uh, to the Municipal Home Rule Board. That took place. That meeting took place yesterday morning. Um, the Home Rule Board uh, endorsed and approved the amendment unanimously. Um, there was, uh, there were a number of questions uh, that were posed. Um, there was some uh, a, a local resident uh, traveled to Charleston to appear before the uh, board voice his opposition to the plan amendment. Uh, he was heard 
and um, and ultimately the the board made its uh, made its decision. Uh, I, is that a resident of Buckhannon? Not not a, well, a resident of Upshur County, not not one of the Um The Home Rule Board uh, action took place uh, together with a communication from the State Tax Commissioner um, that uh, clarified uh, in really no uncertain terms that our, uh, that because of the timing uh, of, uh, of everything, because we did not present at the October Home Rule Board uh, meeting, that was, that was never an option to present at the October meeting uh, because of the timing of, of this initiative uh, that our ordinance as of today, our ordinance would have to, to if approved, it's on the first reading tonight, if the council were to approve the ordinance, it cannot, uh, collections cannot begin until January 1st of, the, of 2020. Now, uh, we have, uh, we have two cards to play. One is uh, an appeal through the tax commissioner's office once all of our material is submitted um, and, uh, and the ordinance is enacted and it's uh, submitted, uh, certified, and we, and all of this material has previously been compiled uh, by AMBI uh, and, uh, and folks in the office uh, with the expectation, and our original plan was to pass this ordinance and have everything to the tax department uh, by December 31st. Um, <coughs> prior to carrying out that plan, uh, we received guidance from the tax department that we could not do that prior to the Home Rule Board meeting, even though the draft of the ordinance was made, uh, its effectiveness uh, contingent upon the approval of the Home Rule Plan, the Tax Department uh, took a, a very conservative stance and, and denied us the opportunity to enact the ordinance before December 31st of, of 2018. So following uh, State Tax Department uh, guidance, uh, we are uh, we have prepared, and uh, what will be before you under strategic items is the first reading of Ordinance 433, uh, the, uh, the establishment of municipal uh, sales and service and use tax, which we will get into later. Barring a change of position by the tax department, we have one other <coughs> option to play, and that is to uh, appeal to the legislature uh, for a special bill uh, which would enable the ordinance to take effect uh, sooner than January 1st of 2020 to take, to take effect uh, July 1st of 2019. Um, I've received some initial uh, expressions of support for that, uh, for that approach and uh, a request to draft or a request that came this morning to draft that piece of legislation which I will begin to do um, forthwith. And, uh, and will be presented uh, to uh, Senator Hamilton in particular, uh, who, uh, who will begin uh, its journey through the legislative process, and I, will, uh, and I will do what I can to shift that piece of legislation through to, to uh, make our um, municipal sales tax effective uh, at, the, at the earliest possible date. Excellent. Questions for Tom? We're gonna bring him back here in just a couple minutes. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Good work on uh, the home uh, correspondence and information, you got a bunch of stuff in your package. There's the newsletter uh, from the Volunteer Center for January. There's an email, uh, which you have to read it to believe it, uh, from a Jesse Faison oh, yeah, that was from awesome. uh, down in Richmond. He wants to uh, reunify Virginia and West Virginia. Yeah. Um, there's the Upshur County Homeless and Housing Coalition meeting minutes for November 14. Uh, those guys and gals are going to uh, come to a meeting, I think maybe as early as February, uh, to tell us again about what they're doing relative to the homeless issues in Upshur County. Uh, there's, Andy mentioned this, the State Auditor's 2019 Budget Workshop flyer. There's a FOIA request, again, from that outfit, Smart Procure, regarding purchasing records. We get that once or twice a year, don't we, Andy? There's a statement from the State Tax Department regarding property valuation uh, fund budget matters. There's a city PR matter on the Upshur Arts Alliance spelling bee. And there's a couple of uh, articles uh, for your taking up that I've included, the, the latter one of which is a very compelling art, uh, article 
you might remember uh, two years ago when I contacted Gordon Gee, President of WVU, and also had some correspondence with uh, the CMO at uh, Ruby, Dr. Clay Marsh. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great uh, piece on where we are with the uh, opioid and, and drug crisis. Um, your can consent agenda, if you'll kindly approve it, consists of three matters. The approval of our minutes from the last regular meeting on January 3, the approval of the uh, building and wiring permits, and lastly, the approval of payment of the general fund bills. I would entertain a motion that we approve <coughs> our consent agenda. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Skinner and a second by Mrs. Albaugh. Is there discussion on the motion? Hearing of the need for none, I'll call for that question. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Strategic matters. Uh, and Callie teased us with a couple of these, and now we'll, we'll bring them to the table. Um, discussion, possible vote, memo of understanding uh, for the grant on families leading change. Callie, you want to you want to say anything else about this? Uh, you That's already just mentioned that it. Small. I think it's a thousand dollars and it'll be supplies for the after school club that uh, does gardening and nature related activities at Stalker. So she just needs a motion to pursue that? Uh, uh, well, it, we, we've gotten an award, mm -hmm. but we want to tinker with uh, it a bit. But we're going to do a retort to them yeah. uh, that, that we, we don't want to do two things for a thousand bucks, we just want to do one thing for a thousand bucks. Have I captured that correctly? That's true. Yeah. So does everybody understand what we're doing? We're gonna we're gonna qualifiably accept and hope that they'll uh, let us apply the thousand dollar grant to just the one matter. Mm -hmm. So I have a motion by Mr. Rigger. May I have a second to his motion? Second. I have a second by Pam Capari. Is there discussion on that motion? I'll call for the question. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. And then the HRSA uh, grant, which has to do with the opioid planning stuff, there is no uh, financial participation or liability directly associated with this by the city. I did a letter of support for the Opportunity House grant, and we've had uh, a number of meetings the last couple of three weeks involving representatives from St. Joseph's Hospital, uh, community care, uh, the city, the uh, Wesleyan uh, School of Nursing. Mm -hmm. um, health department. Did you say health department? Who else was it? Health department. The health department. Mm -hmm. Seems like I'm forgetting somebody, but anyway, it's uh, it's been a real. Rx remedies. Rx remedies. There you go. So it's been there's been seven or eight partners, but the technical applicant will be Opportunity House. Mm -hmm. So there's just a, a letter of support in the file. Uh, and and I, I, it's not really anything for council to take action on. If we get it, you'll know about it. But it seemed uh, more important to explain it than just sticking it under correspondence and, and not offering anything else. You want to say anything else about you, you're helping Matt with the grant application? Yeah, maybe just Christy Walker with uh, Community Care of West Virginia was extremely helpful uh, to Matt in getting this submitted. It's something that they've been awarded in the past. so. She was helpful in sharing, you know, how they were able to apply and receive the funding. And everyone else that you had already mentioned uh, have come in with letters of support. And so it's not something where we would be alone in this. It's something that's really been a community effort to get this submitted. And this is a, again, uh, a planning grant. Right. Uh, that could ultimately evolve to being a programmatic mm -hmm. uh, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. But one of the things relative to the plan that we would like to do, we'd like to request funding ultimately for sort of a web ma master kind of a person mm -hmm. that would bring all of these resources together. You have a family member that is uh, has just been you know found having a, a drug issue. Mm -hmm. and what do you do? What are your options relative to uh, placement and where can you get the help? We don't really have a repository for all of those various things. And establish some Q&A stuff uh, to, uh, to be a, a first go-to point for people that have family members and friends in need. Mm -hmm. 
Is that a fair statement? So, so the city's endorsing it? Yes. Yes. Do, do, do it, do it, uh, would the county and the Board of Ed also be appropriate to be an endorser of that the too? The Board of Ed um, partnered with Community Care of West Virginia on their grant, which they were awarded last year. And in order not to duplicate efforts, uh, they the funders wanted to see that you were doing something different if you were to apply again. So we're focusing instead of K through 12 education more on. Uh, community education as in this website and probably that same information could be compiled in some kind of print format as well uh, but trying to bring the focus to a more community education instead of um, the Board of Education again in fear that they might turn it down based on the fact that they might say well this is what you had been awarded last How about the county uh, well the county health department in that capacity anyway that same time with Leslie and do the good school of nursing. And the school of nursing with Leslie. Mm -hmm. Next up is approval of ordinance 433, establishing a municipal sales and service tax and use tax first reading. Tom, I'll bring you back up. First approval on this one. So, Mr. Mayor, um, this is the ordinance that was approved. Uh, well, this is the ordinance that is now authorized under our municipal, our amended municipal home rule plan. Article one is uh, largely based on a template provided by the tax commissioner's office um, under their municipal uh, tax toolkit. So the operative, uh, the operative language um, has been tailored, of course, to to fit our own circumstances and needs. But its, uh, but its foundation and its framework um, is based on that uh, issued by the, uh, the tax commissioner. Article two affects the reduction in the B&O tax. That is a necessary element of the ordinance uh, under the amended municipal home rule plan. Uh, it, reduces the retail B&O by uh, five cents per hundred dollars um, for each level at the uh, at the uh, one million to uh, uh, to ten million dollar level it will drop from 25 cents per hundred to 20 cents per hundred and above ten million dollars in adjusted gross income it will be reduced from 50 cents per hundred dollars to 45 cents per hundred. The ordinance is drafted in such a way that that reduction does not take effect until the sales tax itself uh, takes effect, which would be in its current form January 1st of 2020. If we are successful in our efforts to receive authorization to implement this tax sooner, we would need to revisit this ordinance to amend it to include a, a uh, uh, an effective date or a, a collection date of July 1st versus January 1st. But under their current guidance, uh, the tax commissioner's office required this draft. And this draft was submitted to the tax commissioner's office for their approval. And they have approved uh, this ordinance as to be uh, They required the January 1st, 2020 uh, date to be in the ordinance uh, currently. But if we are successful, we can go back and we can amend this to uh, <coughs> July 1st yeah, if we have that. Question. So, Tom, to be clear, everything that the council has had involvement with up to this point with this uh, matter has been propositional to get it before the Home Rule Board. And now that we have had that approval, we're now <coughs> advancing it in ordinance form so that we can get it to the state tax department at, at our earliest opportunity and try to get this thing effective. That's that is correct. And this is first reading. The, the uh, code requires two readings uh, and a public hearing. So the public hearing will take place uh, and publication uh, for the public hearing, uh, which will take place at the next meeting on February 7th uh, at the uh, outset of the meeting. And, uh, and then this ordinance, if approved tonight, uh, this ordinance will be up for uh, second reading and passage on February 7th. It will take effect under the charter on March 9th, um, but the taxes um, imposed and reduced in the ordinance respectively will not, the changes will not take place under this ordinance until uh, January 1st. 
Do you want to read? Oh, do you want to read it first by Catherine and get it on the table? Thank you. I have one question. Well, let's we're, we're going to discuss okay. it after we get it on the table. Ordinance number 433 of the City of Buchanan and Ordinance 1, establishing a municipal sales and service tax and use tax. Two, establishing a special revenue fund into which municipal sales and service taxes and use tax will be deposited. Three, amending the City of Buchanan's retail B&O tax to reduce the rate of tax collected. And four, setting effective dates of this ordinance and the articles thereof. I would entertain a motion that we approve on the first of two re readings, Ordinance 433. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Second. Skinner. I have a second by Mrs. Aldo. Now, is there a discussion on the motion, Mr. Thomas? Yeah, the, um, when you say January 1 or July 1, is there, is there another opportunity like October 1? Is that what No, the uh, tax department, uh, legislative rules promulgated by the tax department uh, require uh, municipal uh, sales and use taxes to take effect on either July 1st or January 1st, and um, and and there's no wiggle room in there currently. That's uh, that's part of what we're going to try to appeal to with the legislature, and maybe and maybe in October 1st, um, maybe adding quarterly options uh, instead of just biennial options is would, would end up being a compromise position but I want to make sure it's a calendar year or fiscal year only. That's right. Yeah. And That's it's dumb. not inconsequential. You know, we've budgeted uh, <clears throat> anticipated a million dollars. So six months costs us half a million dollars. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me that all right we have a is there any further discussion on the motion? Uh, I'll call for the question. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. The minutes will reflect that the uh, first reading passes unanimously. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Takes us down to, oh, I'm sorry. I almost forgot you, Matt. Matt and uh, Matt Gregory and Jerry Arnold have been talking about different ways for us to add security cameras to places uh, needed. Uh, Matt and I had a conversation, I think, at uh, maybe our last Kalia meeting where for $399, um, you can acquire these uh, cameras that are high resolution, and they're typically put in places where you don't have ready power. Uh, so these could be mobile, changed from place to place, uh, places like uh, where there's been repetitive uh, finding of hypodermic syringes, uh, it's like what's going on at this location, it, it, you get the idea. And uh, so I was advancing, and so said, we had to get about 25 of those, 399 a pop, and budget $10,000 for them and put them all over the place. And Jerry says, not so fast, my friend. You know, like a week or so on game day. <laughs> and what Jerry, Jerry says, you don't, where we have already have electrical capabilities, that we don't need to do the internet uh, thing, that we can handle it through our own uh, technology system. So, do, do, who wants to speak first about this, Matt? You, you, yeah, I can advance. You and I talked about it sure. before Jerry and I talked the, about the, it. Uh, this came about uh, just last month. We had a uh, presentation down at the police department from a um, representative at USA, or uh, who was uh, just talking about different solutions. Uh, one of which was security cameras, and <clears throat> the solution that they offer is through their service, which. Uh, allows for more mobility and again as the mayor said places that aren't uh, uh, readily available for uh, having power uh, these are, uh, cameras are IP cameras meaning that uh, they connect uh, uh, you can connect uh, to them from the internet you can see a live feed on the camera uh, they do record uh, in real time and the storage is stored on a cloud. So unlike the existing uh, surveillance system that we have in place at different parks and around our, our buildings uh, where we maintain our own storage, uh, this storage is maintained by a server owned by USA. It's our data, it's our, it's our, uh, our video, we, we, we uh, have the right to it. Uh, we just uh, uh, do not manage the storage space. And therein lies the, the acquisition of the camera was just around the $300 mark. And then we pay a monthly fee. And I, I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. Uh, was it $5? I knew it was like the $10 range. <coughs> and the fee is, is uh, the pay for storage. 
and because it's on the cloud, it is indefinite, whereas you have storage uh, issues um, uh, when you manage your own server, your own uh, database, you, have, you are limited. Uh, so uh, that is certainly an option uh, uh, that was advanced to us. Uh, I know that it came about uh, in this conversation that uh, Harrison County had engaged this technology. Uh, they were having some uh, issues on their rail trails. Again, another uh, remote location in Harrison County that doesn't uh, have ready access to power. And uh, they, they purchased a number of these cameras and placed at different places along the rail trail to help curb some of the issues that they were having in that location. And um, this uh, may very well be a, a viable option, particular uh, uh, for areas uh, such as re remote areas of the wall trail. As you all know, we've had uh, a number of issues uh, in the past with vandalism. Uh, a lot of things were pulled out there just a couple years ago. And, uh, the, these security solutions uh, could uh, help to uh, monitor and uh, ideally, first and foremost, prevent that type of activity. But if it should occur again, it gives us uh, uh, a viable option to be able to investigate it a little better. And these are battery operated. They are, yeah. So you're, you're, you, uh, I believe the battery lasts for a month, if, if I remember. Uh, I was, I was thinking six months. Well. Six months. Was it six months? Okay. Yeah, six months. That that sounds that, that's right. <coughs> so you, you, you do have the upkeep of that. Um, yeah, just just depending on. But the, I think, but I think just, you're right. They're just general double A batteries. They're not like they are. any special. Right. Regular so batteries. Sixteen of them. Sixteen batteries. 16 batteries. Yeah. So what does, does the camera like? Does it not activate unless there's like motion or something, and then it pops up? Because there's no way it's going to run 24/7 and battery lasts that long. Uh, you, 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 know, you manage those parameters. It's on Main Street. It, there's going to be motion. Oh yeah. I uh, would advocate, CJ, that. These cameras are just exactly what Matt said there. For areas that have no readily available power, there's we know there's places that we want to monitor. I've, I've gotten quotes from our IT department on, uh, for instance, the dog park uh, at the bathhouse at the walk trail, North Buchanan Park. And so I have those quotes available to us. We've also uh, had them researching Main Street and where the best location for cameras on Main Street were because you know you're always going to have blind spots if you mount them on City Hall and uh, you know you're going to have trees behind the planters in the doorways of the, the businesses. We've even looked uh, from the top of the building from from the theater in particular if that would be a location to maybe mount one. We may end up with one on each block, but I wouldn't advocate. This is more of a tool for. Uh, uh, I kind of compared it to if you have the speed signs, the stationary speed signs in front of the schools, but Matt also has a speed trailer. That can blanket anywhere else in the city. That's kind of what we're talking about because it's much more efficient for us to have our fixed stationary cameras that are on our intranet here in Buckhanna than what it is to put these things all over town and change batteries in them. And then the other thing you got to think about with these cameras are if you put them in a location high enough that they can't be messed with, then you've got someone either climbing the ladder or having to have a piece of equipment there to locate them. So they're a good tool for Matt to use, but they're not for a permanent solution to uh, an ongoing uh, place that you want to monitor, like our parks or uh, eventually, you know, when we get the lighting at the wall trail uh, around the loops that you know, we can go to those fixed cameras. But in the interim, this is a very good solution, particularly for the nature trail where he has a lot of problems. Especially with, as you noted, the vandalism that we've had in virtually every park. Well, it certainly mitigated the issues we were having at Jawbone Park camera we had there. Uh, we haven't seen any, anything going on there since, since they were put up, really. So one of the one of the key elements to, to surveillance, and, and again, Matt can attest to this, is someone has to, to watch those cameras, and then when something happens, they have to go back and search that video for that happening. And that's not an easy task sometimes, uh, particularly if it's not something. It's it's easy if someone spray paints something, 
because you have a before and after. So you can go back and scroll through your video fairly quickly. But if it's a crime against a person that moved on, it's, it's a little more difficult to find that in that 24-hour video feed. Mm -hmm. And recording is, is everything because we, the issue we had at the art gallery, we yep. would have never been able to figure it out or have anything if, if because what we had pri just a few meetings prior to that, all we had at the art gallery was a camera that just ran. There was no recording mechanism, but we as a board implemented that, upgraded, and lo and behold, then had the issue and Rich Clemens and you were able to go back and pinpoint, but if it just runs, it's, it's, not, it's not the same. We, we currently have uh, video storage both at, and, and the waste department has an NVR, and there's an NVR in a, in a lock cabinet above the, the police department. But that storage is secure storage for us, so we can go back to that any time. And typically, we were talking the other day about storage of the, in those units. Typically, we're getting close to maxing out that 16 camera unit that's at the police department. But you're talking about a terabyte uh, unit somewhere in the $350 range for a 16 camera NDR to record these things. And a fixed camera somewhere in the, the $150 to $200 range. Now, if you get into something like we have at the police department outside the building and crossroads recycling some of the, the Zoom uh, tilt pan zoom cameras, you can get up to $1,500 in, in a camera. But that would be something that you could cover maybe Main Street with. There's a couple of cameras. But I'll tell you that it is worth the investment in that can too because, uh, for instance, the one at Crossroads, you can zoom it in and read what titles are available at Redbox inside the lobby at Walmart. Well, the, the tilt pan zoom camera at the city park has netted close to a half a dozen felony arrests, felony drug arrests in the middle of the day and that we would never would have encountered had we not had someone monitoring that and being able to use that camera and it, it's netted in a number of different felony drug arrests, in the, like I said, in the middle of the day. Well, I asked the guys to talk to you about this because we know we need more security, more cameras. And we're getting ready to start into this budgetary process. If we can put the, the pencil to it and figure out how many of the uh, mobile units we could use and how many of the fixed units we could use and exactly where we would put them, I'd, I'd like to advance that with the council as we get into February and March. So maybe you guys can start assessing the map and, and figuring out where we should put them. Some of, some of those are in, uh, will be in Brad's budget request for sure. Part. Some of that, some yeah. of that will already be part of that budget. Excellent. Okay. Questions for either Matt or Jay? Nope. Thanks, fellas. Thanks, guys. Council comments and announcements. We'll start with Mary Alba. No, why don't you start the only on the other side, Mary? I'll just take a break. Mary always gets to go down. Pay for Alba. Take a break. Comments from Mary. You don't have anything there? No, I do, but I don't, I'd rather you start on that anyway. Hey, I'm not starting. You, you, you pay, pay, your name starts with A, so go. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> I just want to uh, remind everybody to go out and vote for the school levy on Saturday. Uh, Dr. Greenwald Allman today, I talked to him, and he wanted to send her his thanks for us endorsing the city council mayor for endorsing the school levy. And uh, he also said there's been over a thousand people come in and vote. He's pretty sure it's going to be pretty positive. So. Um, another thing is I am going to start my meetings again this Monday at 6 o'clock on January 21st. Anybody would like to be a volunteer to have to do with anything going on downtown as far as the 4th of July celebration, Christmas, and whatever else you want to help volunteer with. And I appreciate that. And they'll be here at 6 o'clock on Monday. And you'll be trying to draw a bead on how many new light poles we'll have on the Gateway West so exactly. that we can start looking at holiday banners and the yes. whole bit there too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Now, I really need people. I mean, people like to make their comments and want this and want that, but we need volunteers. That's the only way we do it. We need volunteers. Yeah. Mr. Rollins. I'm good. Nothing, huh? Wow. Mr. Stringer. Uh, I would just echo what Pam said. I hope everyone will go out on Saturday and vote for uh, the school levy. 
um, we uh, we did endorse it as a council, and um, it is it is one of those things that is the right thing to do for our community. It is not a um, an increase; it is a renewal of our current rate, and it does make up a very important uh, percent. Uh, it's only 10%, but it's a very important 10% of the multi-million dollar budget that our, our school system operates on. So please vote yes for the school levy on Saturday. Excellent. Mr. Thomas. Please support the levy. That's all you got? Yep. Mr. Rigger. No comments. No comments. Um, I, mo most of what I was going to say has already been said. Uh, <laughs> Mary, Mary, you oh, Mary's ahead. back. I'm sorry. <laughs> What happened when you disappear in the middle of the meeting? Right? Sometimes you just gotta go, Dave. <laughs> go ahead, Mary. Okay. Enjoy. It's nice to see Amanda and Tom Cleese. Is it Cleese? Cleese. That's good. Okay. Glad to see you. And our couple out here that comes just about every meeting. Did y'all hear? Were you here that last? We were in New York. Oh, you okay, missed it. Good time okay. to go. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jerry, Amy, Matt, and Tom. Tom. Thank you for having thank Tim. I'll call it. <laughs> Shut up. Anyways, and, are you, um, Mary, are you okay? Tom? We had a good meeting. No, I had to sit here too long. Okay? <laughs> I'm tired of sitting here long. <laughs> But I called everybody else. I did. Um, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Groundhog Day, February 2. Come on out and see French Creek Freddy. The real one, not the one in Jawbone Park. And, uh, gee, I certainly echo everybody's uh, remarks about the school levy. We just got to get that thing passed. Mr. Thomas has asked for a short executive session to discuss personnel matters. For West Virginia Code, Chapter 6, Article 9A, Section 4, there will be uh, no, uh, no votes taken. So, with that, I would entertain a motion that we adjourn to executive session. I move. I move. I have a motion and a second. Discussion on the motion. Call for the question. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 We're going to take a uh, three to five minute break.